Hi, I'm Dr. Louis Pasquale. I'm professor of ophthalmology I'm, um, in the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. I'm the site chair of the uh, Department of Ophthalmology at Mount Sinai Hospital. And I am uh, the director of the Eye and Vision Research Institute at New York Eye and Ear at Mount Sinai. So actually we found that uh, drinking coffee, even in large amounts, was not associated with higher intraocular pressure or increased risk of glaucoma with one exception. That is, if you had a strong genetic predisposition to having a higher intraocular pressure, then caffeine consumption was associated with a very uh, modest increase in intraocular pressure and a high risk of developing glaucoma. Now, translating this to your question, if glaucoma doesn't run in your family, you don't need to worry about coffee consumption. Um, if you have a family history of glaucoma, you may want to curtail your consumption of coffee to about two cups per day. Well, um, I, I, according to the Mayo Clinic, uh, the recommended amount of caffeine consumption is about 400 milligrams per day for a healthy adult. Uh, that sort of translates to about two, two and a half cups of coffee. Um, of course, um, one needs to consider the age of the person and their medical history uh, when making recommendations like that, but that's sort of the average. So an eye pressure is, is a vital sign, just like your heart rate and your blood pressure. It's hard to know uh, what your blood pressure is and similarly, it's very hard to know what your eye pressure is. So you really have to have an eye examination to really know what your eye pressure is. So again, high eye pressure uh, is a risk factor. It's not a disease. It's a risk factor for glaucoma. And glaucoma is a disease of the optic nerve and the optic nerves are like telephone cables that connect the eye to the brain. And if the pressure is too high for your optic nerves, then damage can occur. Intraocular pressure has a strong genetic component. So things like exercise can lower your eye pressure, but about two hours after you exercise, your eye pressure is going to go back to its baseline level. Interestingly though, recently it was reported that meditation for about 40 minutes a day lowered eye pressure. Uh, after that, we have, of course, uh, as, a, as a glaucoma specialist, we have medicines, laser procedures, and surgeries that lower pressure as, as deemed appropriate by the uh, eye care provider. Well, more research is, that's a great question. More research is needed at, on that. We only tested whether an intraocular genetic risk score uh, interacted with caffeine consumption in relationship to glaucoma risk. Again, glaucoma is a disease of the optic nerves and we actually have discovered another batch of genes that seem to make the optic nerve more vulnerable uh, to glaucoma, regardless of what the intraocular pressure is. So future research could investigate whether testing such a panel of genes interacts with caffeine consumption to influence the risk of glaucoma. So at this time, we don't know for sure. Yeah, that's a great question, and that's going to be the subject of a future NIH grant, which we hope to get soon. Um, as I've said a few times, we've learned a lot about genes that control your intraocular pressure level, about genes that control whether or not you're vulnerable to optic nerve damage. But we see many patients who, who seem to have no family history of glaucoma, and they still get the disease. So there is a lot of undisclosed factors that contribute to glaucoma. So more research is needed. So the answer to the question is, even with a negative family history of glaucoma, you can still get the disease. Well, well thank you for asking that, because I think that there's been some confusion about the study, and I have received a lot of feedback, including from doctors who said, this study doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, 75% of people or people, let's say in this below the 75th 
percentile for genetic predisposition to higher intraocular pressure seemed to have, uh, for them, coffee consumption was safe. Um, and so how could you say that there is this risk uh, involved amongst those with the highest uh, genetic predisposition uh, to having a higher pressure? So <clears throat> what I want to emphasize is that we're not saying coffee is a bad thing. And in fact, again, uh, there was a recent uh, article in the New York Times that just came out yesterday uh, with uh, the New York Times interviewing Walter Willett who he's one of my colleagues. I work with him. We're on several papers together. This, this man is amazing in terms of his knowledge of diet and medicine in general, and in glaucoma in particular, you know, and they, he was pointing out how for almost every health outcome, it seems like caffeine consumption is uh, at worst having no effect. And in some instances, helpful. So, so what we're saying with the study is this, is that the glaucoma risk that we speak of, it's a, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a composite term of having a large number of genes that are related to higher intraocular pressure, plus drinking a lot of coffee or consuming a lot of caffeine in other ways to the tune of more than 400 milligrams per day that really increase your risk. It's two things together. Now, what's important to understand about that, that that risk that we were talking about, that risk is actually dominated by the genes. However, consuming large amounts of coffee magnify the effects of those genes. That's what we're trying to say. That's what's been the subject of my research for the past 10 years, to find how genes and environment interact in a way to modify your risk of glaucoma one way or the other, either for the good or for the bad. So if those people that had the highest risk score for having high IOP consumed no coffee, they would still be at risk for developing glaucoma. And that's a very important message. And, you know, this work that I've done has given me reason to think about, wow, it would be great to find environmental factors which would actually mitigate that genetic predisposition to the disease. What we are reporting on now is a gene environment interaction where a certain behavior consuming large amounts of caffeine actually exaggerate the genetic risk for the disease. So we continue to search for gene environment interactions in glaucoma, and particularly those that might mitigate against the risk of uh, developing glaucoma. You might ask, does such a thing exist in all of medicine? The answer is yes. So for instance, we know of hundreds of genes that are responsible for your weight. And we know um, that, you know, there are people that have trouble controlling their weight, and it's probably on a genetic basis. However, we've done some research and I'm on some of these papers that indicate, for instance, that if you uh, have a genetic predisposition to obesity, exercise actually helps to mitigate against that risk. And so those are the kinds of things we would like to find for glaucoma as well. We haven't found them yet, but we're looking. So we found that leafy green vegetables that are high in nitrates, um, they're associated with reduced risk of glaucoma. And there's also some evidence that they're helpful in preventing the onset of age-related macular degeneration. So far, we've not really found any foods that are associated with adverse effects on glaucoma. So um, when we say that, let's talk in general, like what things that would be helpful for prevention or reducing the risk of any uh, eye disease. And so I would say, I like to say there's seven habits for eye health. Uh, one is protecting your eyes from the sun. Um, so we have shown uh, that too much sun hitting the eye over the course of your lifetime increases your risk of something called exfoliation glaucoma. And there is some suggestion that this also increases the risk of macular degeneration. 
Um, eat lots of leafy green vegetables, as I've said before, that seems to help retard the onset of glaucoma and uh, macular degeneration. Keep your teeth clean. Uh, we found that periodontitis uh, was associated with an increased risk of glaucoma. So periodontal disease, if it develops, uh, your gums start to bleed, uh, something like that, you should get on top of that and treat that right away. Number four is make sure you have a good blood sugar control uh, because uh, getting diabetes increases your risks of, of diabetic retinopathy. And while that's treatable, it's something you'd like to avoid. Don't smoke. Uh, we know that smoking is bad for your health. We know that it causes lung cancer. It also is unequivocally related to certain eye diseases. Uh, namely, uh, uh, macular degeneration is a uh, smoking is a strong risk factor for that, and thyroid eye disease. So, patients that have a tendency for their thyroid to, uh, to become dysfunctional, uh, they can get uh, thyroid eye signs if they smoke. Exercise in moderation is also beneficial, and maintaining uh, a normal blood pressure because high blood pressure can lead to retinovascular accidents such as retinal vein occlusions. So those are my seven habits for healthy eye care. So uh, I think it's very important, um, particularly if you're in an occupation that finds you outside all day, working around places where the sun can uh, bounce off the ground and into the eye, such as working around water, working around snow, working around sand. These are all excellent refre um, reflective surfaces. And you just don't even realize that the sun is actually uh, reflecting off of the ground and into the eye. And if you're in a sort of an occupation like a boat or a roof or a lifeguard, uh, instructor, uh, uh, tennis instructor, those kinds of use particularly uh, need to get yourself some good eye uh, protection with sunglasses to reduce your risk of developing uh, poor eye health later on in your life. And it happens much later. And the reason is, is that it, what people uh, don't realize is that your cornea, the surface of your eye, the clear surface of your eye, like the surface of your watch, um, that's actually a good protector against most UV radiation. However, it does let a small amount of UV through. So if you're outside all the time and you're not protecting your eyes from the sun, that could catch up with you later in terms of getting something like exfoliation syndrome or age-related macular degeneration.